Hello, this is Richard Gill and welcome to a uh, very windy Morecambe Bay and hoping uh, you can pick the sound up all right and it's not too much wind noise. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you today about was um, a creative technique that you can use to uh, make your photos a little bit more interesting. It's something that's fun to play around with. Uh, you see it called ICM, which stands for Intentional, Intentional Camera Movement. And what you're going to do is you're going to move your camera as you take the shot. Now you can move it obviously in um, three directions. You can move it up and down, you can move it side to side, but you could also spin it if you find a suitable subject. Um, and my advice for that, if you're going to do one that's a spin, is make sure you get something in the center that's uh, uh, going to act as a point of focus and then work around that. And here's an example I took of uh, um, some uh, daffodils. Now, uh, the shot I'm going to do today is a landscape photo and I've come down to the beach at a little village near me called Silverdale which is on the edge of Morecambe Bay. Morecambe Bay very famous for its fast moving tides. Now what you want to find in your scene is some layers. So what I've got here is I've got the beach, I've got a bit of green in the foreground uh, from, uh, from the edge of the beach and we've got some blue in the sky and there is some little water levels on the beach as well that the tides left behind so um, hopefully uh, they'll create some interesting patterns. Now if you're new to this channel my name is Richard Gill I'm a professional photographer and on here I provide free photography tips and tutorials to help you take better photos. Sounds like something you're interested in? Then why not subscribe to the channel? Right, let's get back to our intentional camera movement. Now this is something that you're only going to do if you practice. So my first advice is to get your settings and the main one to concentrate on is your shutter speed. Um, and your shutter speed needs to be long enough to get some blur into your photo. So I would start with something like half a second and play around with it because it depends a little bit on how fast you move your camera. And I would also advise you when you're doing that movement sort of lock your legs and rotate from the hips so you're trying to keep a nice smooth level. You want to try and keep your camera at the same level so that those levels blur nicely uh, across your image. So let's have a go and uh, see what we're going to get. Um, now if it's a very bright day like today you might need to fit uh, an ND filter just so you can get that slow enough shutter speed. Don't worry too much about your aperture you're probably going to have to choose a, a very small aperture so it's a high f number just so you can get that uh, slow shutter speed of, of around about half a second. So I'm going to give this a try and uh, hopefully get it before my uh, camera blows over. I, I must admit I'm really quite worried by how much it's shaking uh, as I look at it in this video but let me see if I can capture, uh, capture a shot. So my settings for that, I had an f-stop of actually 4.5. I've got a six-stop ND filter on here and uh, my shutter speed was 0.6 of a second. So I'm just going to play around. I'm going to try a, a longer shutter speed and uh, see if that gives me a more pleasing result. can see the kind of result. Now if you want to do a vertical one what I'd recommend is that you try and find somewhere with a like a woodland with lots of trees and uh, I'm gonna have a little walk up the uh, coast here there's, there's quite a few trees and try it there. 
Uh, in all honesty, it works best if you find something with lots of straight trees, so like a pine forest or uh, somewhere with a lot of birch trees. They work really well. It also works very well uh, in autumn or winter when you've got you know, no leaves on the trees and you've got these lots of nice straight trunks. And uh, I'll show you an example of one I took uh, elsewhere and you can see how that, that turned out. But basically the same principles apply. Now there's one other super tip I can give for you and that's still think about your composition. So you need to think about things like the rule of thirds and try and set your colour bands so that they form thirds across the frame, you know, don't have it half and half, but, but it's really a thing of playing around. It's going to produce a very abstract photo. Um, so just do what you feel is right, see what results you get and take lots of pictures and practice it. So I'm going to take a few more at some slightly different shutter speeds. So I've found these trees behind me. It's not the most uh, brilliant woodland scene, but just to illustrate the point to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my camera so the frame is right at the top. So I'm not getting any sky. I want to start with trees in the top of the frame. And then I've got about uh, a second exposure and I'm just going to pan down. And, uh, create some movement between the stalks, the trunks rather, and the bits of light that are coming in between. Now over on the other side here, I've also, uh, there's some limestone, uh, a little bit of a limestone cliff, it's got some nice gorse bushes on the top, and then there's blue sky behind, so I'm going to try that, and I'll try that both vertically and horizontally, and uh, see how that comes out. you found that useful and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun and uh, it's really about just taking a lot of photos and uh, just seeing what works for you. It's one of the few occasions where you might want to set your camera into uh, instead of recording in RAW recording as a JPEG if you're going to take lots and lots of photos and you're worried about how much space you've got left on your memory card. Now I'd love to see some of your examples. By all means, post them in the Nifty 50 Photographers Facebook group and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you have found this video useful, please do remember to give it a like. I'll look forward to seeing you again in the next video.